Hello there and welcome back to another review. Today we're going to be having a look at one of my all time most uh, favourite anime movies of all time obviously and this is Pat Labour the movie. Um, absolutely love this film, absolutely um, incredible, just absolutely amazing. I'm going to be getting in today why I love this movie so much, why it's a favourite of mine and just why, I mean... I have, can't even count how many times I've seen this movie. I can watch it again and again and again. Absolutely love it. Absolutely one of my favourites. Directed by the great Mamoru Ushi, who of course most notably directed Ghost in the Shell, and this was made in 1989. This was one of the first anime that I bought um, on DVD. It was around when DVD, which I've still got here, this is the one I bought, um, it was around the time when DVD was very much sort of kicking in. So you're talking around 98, uh, 99. It might have been even actually probably later than that. It might have been around 2000 time. Um, one of the first ones I bought on DVD because I always remember watching a trailer to Pat Labour, maybe on the like the Ninja Scroll VHS that I had. Um, and it was something I never saw um, in the like sort of when it was uh, Mango were releasing, um, you know, so many anime on VHS. And it was, it was a trailer that I always remember. Um or like it might have been on the Ghost in the Shell video I had, and just the like the design and how it looked, and just the quality of the animation, even just from that small trailer, I never forgot it. Like I always wanted to see it. Um, it was a movie that um, they they had Pat Labor and Pat Labor too. I know there's loads going on with Pat Labor, and um, but talking of the movies. Um, it was something I definitely I just had to see for some reason. I, I like you know when you sometimes you, it's really weird, but you know sometimes when I don't know if any of you out there have had this. You know you're going to like the movie before you've even seen it. Um, I'm not sure if any of you have had that or if that makes sense to any of you. But you know already from what you've seen, even if it's just a small glimpse in the trailer or something like that, you already know you're going to like the film. And Pat Labour like, here was like sort of like that for me. Um, it just became it. I mean, Pat Labor became a body of work that I, you know, I was very interested in, especially with the like of the mech design. Absolutely amazing stuff. Seeing a trailer like that when you're around ten years old, I mean, it just blew me away. When I was about ten, eleven years old, seeing something like that, I was just like, I must see this movie. Now I've no major knowledge with the Pat Labor franchise other than really sort of the first two movies. Um, you know, I will. The franchise created by Headgear, which is a group of artists and that created it, Oshi being one of them, has moved. You know, it's moved beyond like sort of manga into TV series and overs, and of course movies, and often overlooked um, or forgotten about by a lot of people. So, if any of you out there are Pat Labor fans, please uh, comment uh, below because I'd, uh, it's nice to always you know connect with people that have like uh, you know a love for the same uh, franchise or films that you do. But we're looking at the first movie today, and as I say, an absolute brilliant, brilliant film. And not just one of my favourite animes, but probably one of my probably one of my favourite films of all time. Um, I, could, I could easily watch this film every month, no problem, and still enjoy it. I've never, ever got bored watching this movie. So the film starts very bleakly and eerily, with this guy sort of throwing himself over a structure. You have not... And the, I will go, before I start, I will go, say... Um, like me, if you have no knowledge of Pat Labour, if you don't know the characters that you know, or the dynamic between the characters, it really doesn't matter. You can go into this film totally new, you know, totally wet behind the ears, and just enjoy it for what it is. Um, so yeah, the film starts with this guy throwing himself off a structure. You have no idea why, but the music in this film is absolutely perfect. It just sets the tone wonderfully. Very creepy, intriguing opening, which just sets everything up absolutely wonderfully. So then we cut to these mechs known as labors landing in the jungle and when that music kicks in oh boy you know what the, the opening to this movie is how you open a movie um i believe the opening is on uh, youtube i think you can watch it i think someone's uploaded it but it's just incredible if you watch that opening uh just th th this is like textbook how you open a friggin movie just so awesome they are hunting like this enemy labour. I mean, you have no idea why at this point. This is all at night, which adds to the mood. So after an amazing action scene, we learn there is no pilot in the labour. So this labour's like gone rogue, gone completely crazy, but there's nobody actually in the pilot's seat, we learn. Um, when the film begins, we learn of Operation Babylon, which is like a vast construction project, and the Ark, which is like a giant, huge man-made structure that works as sort of the nerve centre to all of this. <clears throat> We learn that there is a term called labor sabotage, where pilots are losing control of their mechs and they're basically going haywire. Like these labors are going completely mental. They're not. They're not following um, sort of 
the operator's instructions. They're just going absolutely crazy, um, you know, just going rogue. Um, so pilots are losing control of their mechs and they're just going absolutely mental. Shinobu Nagumu meets with Ashuma Shinohara and Noah Izumi who work under Captain Godo. They've come to the project to have a look at the latest labour, the Type Zero, which is the first labour to use the HOS, which is a sort of a hyper operating like system. It's sort of like its brain core, sort of what lets the labour, like it's basically its main operating system, which is sort of governing its systems and its mechanics. Um, Shinohara Heavy Industries have improved and it's them who own the Ark. So we then learned that the rogue labour we saw at the beginning was fitted with this new operating system so already there's a connect new operating system Lo labor's gone completely mad probably might be a connection there you know but it doesn't it the plot is it, it is so well done i mean this is the kind of film that you know if they'd done it as a live action movie it i mean it's it would it would probably you know still work but um, you know, so they've got fitted with this new system. Of course, and less familiar with the manga and the characters, a lot of the di like the dynamic between the team team members might be lost. But as I mentioned, it doesn't ruin the film. It doesn't. Uh, you don't need to go into this. Well, hang on, I don't know nothing about Pat Labor. Um, you know, I'm not going to understand anything. It really, really doesn't matter. But it's still a very enjoyable movie, as I say. <laughs> So a labour goes out of control in like downtown. The labour police are sent to deal with it. Nice action scene here with Ota, the like the hothead, um, and they just don't make anime like they used to. They just don't. I know there's still some great, amazing anime being made, uh, being made, but I've I've always been a fan. I don't know if it's just like nostalgia or what I grew up with, but I was always a big fan of the mid to late eighties uh, anime, like early nineties uh, sort of time. Uh, when there was just so much great output and there was so much, so many um, great franchises, so many great films, so many, uh, like even between 85 and 95, that's sort of my favourite era um, for anime. Um, so many films I've yet to see as well. So if any of you know of any like sort of classic anime that I haven't seen or not aware of, please leave it in the comments below because I'm, I'm always look on the lookout for sort of uh, retro anime that um, I've never seen before. You know, in this scene, go back to what I was saying, you get houses and buildings watching. You, the, the, what's great is you're watching these two mechs go at it. I mean, if you love mech, you will absolutely love this movie. Ota ends up shooting the coolant tank and gets frozen in the process, which is quite funny because he just completely freezes himself um, after he shoots the coolant tank. Um, <coughs> Ota wrecks the rogue labour, so they can't investigate it to see sort of what happened. Captain Godo says if he reports that he would, you know, if he reports all this, it won't go anywhere. As the two, there's too many things at stake, like the company's reputation. There's a big sort of conspiracy throughout the film. The whole film does very much play like a mystery. It's not just, I mean, you could say on paper it's just labor's going rogue, right? They're just losing uh, pilots are just losing control of their labors. But there's a lot more to it. Um, there's a lot more. There's, like I say, a real mystery, eerie mystery in the air. Um, that does work um, as the film progresses and it goes on. Um, he hires Detective Matt Sweet, not sure um, why right away, but if you look at the shots and the artwork on, and the rundown buildings of the city, it's like this detective and him and his assistant look around and that melancholy music that's playing. You really do get that feeling of isolation. It creates a real sense of mood an atmosphere and it's just and it's very slow paced but it's them sort of looking around the city just like detective you're not sure again like i say why at this point who these people are why he's been hired um but there's some great shots i mean some really as i say it's almost somber in nature it's almost um uh eerie as i say the, i know that word keeps on coming up and i've mentioned it a couple of times but this film does have that about it it really does have that sort of mystery um, sort of intriguing feel to it. Um, it just really does work. So especially with the music as well, um, wonderful sense of mood. Asuma is looking through the mainframe records, finds that all labours who have been given them trouble was fitted with the new HOS system and that it has been happening for two months. And that's roughly, that's how long the system has been in service. So go figure. Maybe, as I mentioned, the new HOS system is you know partly responsible here. 
So Godot suspects if we find the system is bug free, it could mean that a rogue program was put in after. And I love, like I keep saying, I love that sense of mystery in the way they are trying to solve a case as to why this keeps happening. Um, we then learn about Iichi Hoba, who was the guy we saw at the beginning killing himself, and he who was like he was like a programming genius who basically created the program all by himself and got a job at Shinohara Heavy Industries. Um, his files and records have been deleted, so Ashuma goes looking around the plant and finds the HOS master disk. Um, system goes nuts and starts printing out the word Babel, Babel over and over again. We learn that the, de like the detective is going around all of Hober's old places to see if there are any clues. Um, so after taking Noah out for dinner, she and Ashuma see, Ashuma see a dog barking and realise it could be sounds that humans can't hear. You know, like um, like a dog whistle, things like that. Maybe that, that noise is the catalyst that is causing these labours to sort of, um, whatever it is in their system, to sort of sense, and that is what's causing them to sort of erupt and um, uh, behave the way they do when they go absolutely haywire and lose all control. Um, so Godot believes Hober actually planned all this. Lots of biblical references in this movie, um, um, you know, Babel, um, just so much and like I say the biblical references keep coming especially from Godot they they do keep um, being mentioned Godot talking about Ehova meaning God and Babel meaning the Babylon project some nice moments of reflection too like between Godot and Matsui where we're talking about how quick things change and what is it mankind's working towards very deep um, thought-provoking stuff uh, Pat Labor 2 I will just quick mention is much deeper uh, for a film, for a premise that is just about sort of mobile police, um, Pat Labor 1 is a lot more, although there is mystery and it is quite heavy in places, it's a lot more sort of light hearted, more light hearted. I wouldn't say the film is light hearted. Um, but Pat Labor 2, especially, which I will get round to reviewing, is very, very deep. Uh, it's a very deep, deep movie. So after trying to work out the problem, Asuma figures out that it's structures that vibrate, like symph sympathetic vibrations, which could cause the labours to go off, Realize, realising that it's the arc that is acting as sort of a conduit for this. I love the notion, what I absolutely love about this is that the villain and antagonist, he like, he's already dead, like he's already killed himself, but he's still causing all this mayhem. And they are always sort of one step behind him. Um, they're always trying to constantly play catch up. They can't always figure out what his grand plan was, what his scheme was. So it's that notion of you're never going to be able to confront the guy. You're never going to be able to get answers from the guy because he's already killed himself. He's already dead. And like you say, it's that feeling that he instigated all this in his lifetime. So it would all happen after he passed away causing so much chaos. I mean, there's a typhoon coming, which of course, like, caused mass labours. There's a typhoon coming. It's going to cause the arc to vibrate more, which will cause more mat like um, labours to go absolutely haywire. So the mobile police are tasked with blowing up the arc, which we find out has like robots, guards, which are just there for the action. Um, but I absolutely love it. Of course, chuck in some robot guards, right? Let's have some robot guards when they're going to blow up the arc. I absolutely, if you watch that scene... Uh, when they're approaching the arc, I absolutely love. Uh, there's a shot, a couple of shots, but I absolutely love the rain and the fact they approach the arc by water, um, the the storm and at night by sea. I mean, it's absolutely freaking amazing. It really does uh, look incredible, and it's so atmospheric. It is so 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 atmospheric. Then we have them storming the arc, and the way the music again, the way the music kicks in, much like with that opening scene. But the way the music kicks in um, is it just when they're going down these corridors, mind blowing stuff, uh, absolutely mind blowing stuff. And God, this scene blew me away the first time I saw it. Just that ending, um, using like an assault vehicle, labors the guns. And I love how fast paced it is. This is anime to me done the way it should be done. This is why. Um, this would be one of these their movies that if somebody was new to the world of anime, I'd be like, watch Pat Labor one. Like literally, I just I, I cannot praise this film enough. I really do love it. It's one of my favourites. Um, so let's say the the angles they use, it's just like I say, so eerie and full on. And what a scene! I mean, the Labors are using shotguns, and I love the first person view from the vehicle at one point as they're sort of speeding around. So they go to shut down the, the system down, and find that someone. This is where the film becomes even more. Uh, like 
as a mystery and like I say, eerie and suspenseful, they find that someone is on the top floor and that's it, that it's Ehoba. And it's like, well, he's dead, but they look at the screen and it's like, he's here. And it's, it's that real, what, oh my God, because you think what's happened, you know? Um, God, I mean, it freaked me out when I first saw it, you know, like I was hooked, like, because this guy's been, you've assumed to believe this guy's been dead the whole time, and he, he is, but you, when they see that thing, I, I was absolutely gripped the first time I saw this, I was absolutely gone, I was miles away. So the labor start rampaging on the Ark, and Kanika, one of the pilots, takes Type Zero, even though he still has the HOS system. With the music, except with the music, etc., and what's happening, everything just keeps ramping up. It's very much, um, if you look at sort of in a way like Police Story Three, like I reviewed previously um, a couple of few videos ago. It just keeps getting more and more. Like it's not just they're going into the Ark. Then there's robot guards. Then Ehoba's there. Then HOS system, she's in, the, you know, and everything just keeps on getting more and more and keeps on ramping up. And I love that even little things like Noah getting out of her mech to reload the gun, uh, the, like the big massive gun that the Labour's carrying. I even love little things like that. She finds a raven, there's a raven that's got Ehoba's disc around his leg. So it ends with Noah having to take on the Type Zero, which has now gone berserk. Um, they purge all the lower floors. I love how you see the two labors sort of facing off at dawn as the sun comes up. Again, blink and you miss its shot, but it's a wonderful little shot that really adds to sort of, sort of the quote-unquote end fight of the movie. And I love Noah as well getting out and giving it multiple uh, shotgun blasts, uh, which is... Uh, great entertaining stuff so they saved the day the arc has collapsed and um so that's it but what an awesome movie it is it's such a ride it's such a um you know it's such a it's not too complicated there is some deep um sort of almost philosophical passages in there which there there are in pat label too um, quite a lot um the film is deep but it's not it's there's a sense of fun with this film and it's all like I say it's very much sort of an eerie mystery but it's a, one of my favorite films um and it's an absolutely barnstorming uh, anime and I just can't praise it enough um obviously when people think of Mamoru Ushii they just think Ghost in the Shell but please check out Pat Labor if you've never seen it because it's a wonderful uh brilliant anime film with great action great soundtrack um really sort of like I say sort of fast paced great mystery great characters and just some fantastic action especially the ending which is absolutely uh, a sight to behold i will try and um i've got here in the box that i will try and get to pat labor 2 as well which i mentioned will probably be um quite a deep review because there's a lot to be said about that film but if you've never seen uh pat labor one please make sure to go and check it out so thank you very much indeed for watching and i'll see you again soon